I made it into the raft. Oh, that was really close. Thank God. Let's have a look outside and see if, if we're likely to be rescued anytime soon. Oh good, it shouldn't be too long. So nice of you guys to come and rescue me here. Yeah. Well, you put your warning signal out. We got yes, the light was on and we wouldn't have come if the light was on, we had many calls. <laughs> you betcha. This wasn't a real emergency, but in the rest of this video, we're going to show you how to launch and board a life raft, describe what it's like inside, and explain a number of other useful features, hints, and tips. This Viking rescue has some really nice, clear instructions. It says, attach the painter to the boat, which we've done there. Throw the life raft overboard, pull the painter, climb down into the water and board the life raft. Let's try it out. Quite a bit of painter in here. Okay, I'm gonna give it a firm tug. You can still hear some hissing and that's okay. It's uh, actually because the canister that inflates the life raft uh, has too much uh, pressure in it and it's releasing that pressure right now. So it's not the life raft leaking. There's a nice little uh, flashing light up here on the roof of the life raft. This particular raft also has a ramp which uh, makes it a lot easier to get into. So other things that we've got going on here, as you can see, the bag here is still attached to the painter. In fact, the painter goes through the bag, follow the painter, and uh, you can see this big mess. There's a foil bag here. Um, this foil bag is used in uh, some of the newer life rafts. It actually enables them to last for up to three years without repacking. Then you can see here is the uh, CO2 canister, uh, which inflates the raft. Then if we look underneath, the water's a bit murky. You can see these bags. Um, that's a, a um, sort of a ballast bag that keeps the raft from flipping over. There's also a ladder that's tied up inside the life raft here. Um, obviously that's not available to the first person. And so what you wanna do is you wanna send the strongest swimmer, the most fit person um, to be the first in the life raft. So once you're inside the life raft, uh, you can see there's a, a bag of equipment here, um, including um, a paddle, um, some more line, uh, and this looks like a, an extra drogue. Not exactly sure what that is, um, but there's also some water, uh, some flares, uh, some seasickness tablets, uh, fishing line in here. And uh, one of the reasons why you have to repack a life raft uh, with the frequency you do is to renew the equipment in here, uh, including these flares and the other items that expire. So this particular raft, uh, I purchased it uh, in 2015. It's now 2022, uh, so it would have expired in 2018. Uh, and as you can see, it's still inflated just fine. I'm not saying you should run with expired rafts, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't try and use one, uh, even though it's expired. This raft is a six person and I mean, there's not, there's not really like a ton of room in here. Uh, I'm going to, I can lay down in here. I'm laying down from end to end. This is a six person life raft and it's really about the size of a two person tent. So uh, with six people in here, I think it would be pretty dang crowded. One of the features that you really want in a life raft, especially if you're in uh, colder waters, is an insulated floor. Um, this, this raft has a dual layer insulated floor and I'm not feeling any cold coming through it at all. It's a, a really, really nice feature. This raft has a rain catcher. You can see there's a diagram here. And uh, here is the rain catcher up on the roof. 
and here is the outside of the rainwater catcher. Um, you can see the rainwater runs down here and is captured in this uh, little pocket here and runs inside. There's also Solus uh, reflective tape uh, on the canopy. Uh, there's a light up on the ceiling. And uh, this is a, you can see by the little diagram here, this is where you uh, open the raft if you need to like barf outside. <laughs> Um, which is a super nice feature. This raft has lots of great instructions on it. Uh, for example, if it's upside down, it says right here. And uh, it instructs you to ride it in such a way that the wind is helping you ride it. You climb up on top and you grab uh, these handles uh, on the bottom. You literally want to just pull it over onto yourself. Different rafts have different levels of certification. This one is certified to ISO 9650-1. We bought it for the Van Isle 360 sailboat race. So you wanna make sure that the raft that you're getting satisfies the safety requirements of the race that you're in. One of the things that you'll wanna do if you're inside a life raft for real is um, establish a routine, um, set up a watch system, and uh, try and create some sense of normalcy uh, for the people inside. And a schedule really helps with that sort of thing. This is a really nice life raft, six person, but it would still be a lot nicer to be on my boat, even if the boat was disabled. So as they say, you should always be stepping up into a life raft and not uh, getting into your life raft for any other circumstance. If your boat's disabled, you're far more likely to be found and be more comfortable on even a disabled boat. Leave a like, subscribe, and watch this next video.